by she, her. How are we doing out there? Good, great, grand, and wonderful. As you see on your screen, your dial, however you're joining. I don't know why. I do not know why you are joining me. This is the worst podcast in the history of podcasts. It's poorly run. It sounds poor. Fucking quality, obviously. Terrible. Content, terrible. Fuck's sake. Uh, all right, listen, I think maybe, maybe I have had a rough couple of days. Ah, <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't want to disservice someone's art on account of my own personal shit. That being said, I watched too much non-consensual in one day. You look at the... Well, not you, me. <laughs> I look at the stuff that I have out of obligation to bring to you, to talk to you about, to promote them to you. And I no longer can watch things that I want to watch unless the shit that I'm obligated to watch is done. So I do this thing where I always... <clears throat> In my head, I will put the stuff that I'm least going to like first if I don't know anything about it. And, you know, I don't I don't Google the trailers or nothing. I don't give it a goog. Uh, and I thought, and in hindsight, terrible idea. Terrible idea. It leaked out on everyone around me. Not even, like, it's not like I was talking about the non-consensuals. Well, I did with my with my boss boss, but that's only because he and I are old enough to know I spit on your grave, the OG. Even though I hadn't seen it, we both knew of it. So I look up at the shit that I'm obligated to watch, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's just, I, I think it's weird because I have... My whole life <laughs> stayed away from that movie. And it's not its not that I can't handle it. Like, that's the thing. I've seen a Serbian film. Whatever you toss my way is going to be fine. That, I don't even think... A, 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 like, a people... A Serbian film is, like... It's mentally and emotionally fucked up, right? You talk about, like, visual stuff, and you talk about those unearthed films. Like, once you've seen a a handful of those unearthed films and Serbian film, there is not a GD thing that you are going to be able to show me that's going to make me, like, turn it off. Like, this is not going to happen. So, you know, I... <laughs> All right, so I don't like <laughs> the... I don't like the sexual violence. You can show me the blood, the guts, the gore all day. But when we get into the, the 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 sexual stuff, I tend to I'm just like it's not that I disrespect or I, I'm one of those people that's just like I, how could they make that like I'm not that how could they show that I'm not, never will you ever hear me say that and if I do say that I'll be asking to see something different like I'll be like I well I still want to see the film but this scene you need to change right and I torment myself because I was like. You should do I Spit on Your Grave, the OG, and then the 41-year or 40-year sequel, direct sequel, even though I think there's like two or three in between. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. You should do that in one day. I know I shouldn't have. <laughs> no, I should not have. Because I I have not felt right for like, and it's a combination of things. It's just not just the movie. I'm, come on, I'm not a fucking, I'm, I'm not that weak. But like, you know, you, you mix life and, you know, everything else or whatever. And you, and you watch this, you watch these. Ah. And to a certain extent, I don't even, it baffles me at this very moment why, I'm, why I am promoting both, <laughs> other than the fact that Ronan Flicks was nice enough to send me 
the um, remastered OG and I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu. Um, I just... There's so much other stuff to watch besides non-consensual. I just... I've also seen Irreversible. So between the three that I've mentioned, or now four and five, if you count I Spit on Your Grave and I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu, if you count the unearthed stuff, a Serbian film, and Irreversible in these two, I don't see how I need to see any more of the sexual violence. <laughs> I I am I am good. Like, you know, do you ever just like... You don't. I know some of you got to feel the same way. You don't just sit down and watch a war film, right? You don't just sit down and watch Schindler's List. You're not like, oh, can you believe it? Schindler's List is on TNT. I'm going to watch it on a Sunday afternoon. You don't do that. <laughs> so, uh. but like I said on the first one, and I'll say here and now again, in terms of the filmmaking. Hard for me to take issue with too much. I thought the original, be it the choice of the no score um, to how convincing Camille Keaton was, well, if you just, if you split it up into heroes and villains and cops and robbers, see, well, it's just a different different depiction, different presentation of, different execution of, right? There's still bad guys, still good guys, good good girls, good ladies, good women, woe man, good woe man. Um, so that's, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, it's, it's not terrible. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that are just like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, you fucking piece of shit. You said you can't do the sexual violence, and now you're saying that I Spit on Your Grave, the OG, is a relatively decent movie? Yes, I am. Uh, which brings us to I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu, starring Camille Keaton coming back. Jennifer Hill, look out, ladies and gentlemen. Why did I do that? Uh, Camille Keaton comes back as Jennifer Hills. And wouldn't you know it, her daughter, Christy Hills, played by Jamie Bernadette. So Christy is Jennifer's daughter. Uh, we are going to talk about... I am going to spoil some stuff for you just because I want you to hear... Even though it's not a, it's hard to do <laughs> with audio, I want you to hear how surprised I was. As maybe I can try to convey that to you. You know, I don't have a script or anything, so we'll just see how it goes. Uh, Maria Olsen, who plays Becky, which I go back and forth on. I, She is either amazing or horrible. I can't figure out which. Which makes me, now hear me, hear me when I say this, which makes me lean towards amazing. I know we're here to we're here to break social norms on the Ellis. Shut the fuck up. Herman, played by Jim Tavare, again. Either Jim's performance is world class or no class. Why? Because I hated I hated Becky. I can't hate it. If I if if I did if I was about to turn off one of these movies at any point it might have been when Becky on one or two occasions was getting loud with motherfuckers. She was loud with motherfuckers through the the whole film. So either Maria is world class I I tend to lean towards you know, we made the decision to have it feel like that. We made the decision to cast her. Did you not hate her? Yes, I did. Well, that is what you are supposed to do. All right. <laughs> All right. Same with uh, Kevin, played by Jonathan Pesey. 
Oh. God damn it, Kevin. Hateable. <laughs> Hateable. Scotty, played by Jeremy Ferdman. Yeah, it was all right. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't, I, when he was on screen, I, I, I wasn't ready to hit the stop button. Uh, how about Holgi or Holgi Forrester, who plays the old woman? Didn't think these, but there's an old woman, and an old man in this that you see them in passing. And it is about at least it, it's I spit on your grave and it should be as such or the shoehorn of the old woman and the old man. Well, no, I mean, it does pay dividends. It's just, I just remember thinking the first run through, I was like, wait a minute, what, what the fuck is who, who is this drunk old lady right now? (laughs) Now, it, it, it could be, it could not be the movie's fault at all. It could be because I had, you know, I, when I found out that this movie was two hours and 28 minutes after I had already watched the OG, I spit on your grave. I about spit on the Blu-ray. Just kidding. Just, but, you know, like, I was like, oh, wait. And, and I knew it was going to be uncomfortable because the same writer director is coming back. You have the, the, the main character of the first one coming back, writer director Mir Zarchi, Mir Zarchi, coming back. And I just, God, bless it. <laughs> maybe, maybe I did miss something. But anyway, the old woman played by Holgi Forrester. The old man, played by Roy Allen the Thoid, the third. Uh, interesting character turn for them. Uh, and I thought, uh, I hope I'm saying her name right, Holgi, Holgi, Holgi. She was an amazing drunk. <laughs> she was absolutely amazing drunk. And then when there is a turn... Well, she becomes just about as despicable as Becky. Not as much. Like, there were certain points I almost put my foot through the TV. (laughs) That's not true. That ain't true. I can't see nothing. Tombstone, Bill Paxton. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So those are our players. It's written and directed by Mir Zarchi. Uh... (sighs) Forty years after the events of the previous film, Jennifer Hills wrote a best-selling memoir based on her non-consensual and has become a successful non-consensual counselor. Her daughter, Christy Hills, is a successful model, having been one since the age of ten. The age of ten, can you believe it? The family of Jennifer's non-consensual, the family of Jennifer's non-consensual and subsequent victim, Johnny, has begun their plan for revenge. So wouldn't you know it, we are back in the woods again. Back in the woods again. With these goddamn hillbillies. These fucking knuckle dragon. The gang consists of Johnny's wife, played by Becky. So... As you heard in the first one, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, Johnny, played by, I think, Aaron Tabor was his name. I don't know. It's the first time I've seen it. Remember, gang, uh, as a horror film, fan, horror film fan, I avoided this one for quite some time. Quite some time. But anyway, Johnny, who got his dick cut off in the tub and bled out, uh, his wife has got a fucking, she's pissed. <laughs> she is pissed. And on the one hand, I, you know, I mean, she cut a fucking Jennifer cut his dick off and left him to die. On the other hand, your man's non-consensual, that lady, that lady by the name of Jennifer. So I think your negativity may be in the wrong direction. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Johnny's wife, played by Maria Olson. Becky. Johnny's mother. Oh, fuck. They really give away the... I almost ruined that for you. 
I didn't believe Wikipedia Wikipedia would have such treachery. I almost get, I, you know, because I, I mean, I'll spoil a couple things for you, but I'm not, I'll never on my life spoil the end for you unless somebody else is on the show, which in that, in that case, you know, it's coming because we, we, you know, we can't have guests on and talk spoiler free sometimes. Christy meets Jennifer at a restaurant. Okay, yeah, let's start from the beginning. Christy meets Jennifer at a restaurant where she expresses her desire to leave modeling and pursue something more challenging. When the two leave, Kevin and Scotty pull over their truck and ask Jennifer to sign a copy of her non-consensual memoir. So we see Kevin and Scotty early, right? And I thought, I mean, we're fucking four to six minutes into this film. They're just a couple of fans. Oh, my God, they've abducted them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now you got to understand the mindset. The mindset was I had ar- I just got done watching the OG. Just got done. The, the credits rolled. I watched uh, a couple of bonus features. Uh, I, well, I had to let the, let the listen. I had to listen to about an hour of Joe Bob's commentary because fucking Joe Bob's the goddamn man. Joe Bob Briggs. Um, but and then I just put deja vu in. So <laughs> when they immediately abduct Jennifer and Christy, I'm just like, I, I fucking can't, gang. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. Just because I, you know, I know in if if history has taught me anything, we have to go a little bit harder on the second go round than the first, haven't we? Um, but uh, for good or ill, I am here to tell you, I don't think if we were, <laughs> he says in a lighter tone than he should have for about what he's, <laughs> what he's about to say. I say to you, I don't think it was as uncomfortable as the first. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, a little bit more, we, a lot of plot in this one. We, we had many layers to this film. We had 40 years to think about it. And in fact, like I just kept on trying to fuck. I I almost felt like towards the end, I was just trying to keep up. Like I was just like, Jesus age negativity. (laughs) We, I can't keep track of all the bad shit that has happened (laughs) in uh, for the whole day, not just in the movie for the whole day. (laughs) Cause you know, between uh, mentally disabled man doing what he did and then you fast forward three hours later and I'm these women are already get abducted and I'm just like fuck I just are we really doing Sean are you really doing back to back bro and the answer was yes because I ain't no fucking it's a movie it's a movie grow up grow up why would you watch something that makes you feel uncomfortable grow up that's why <laughs> I hear people ask me that all the time. Well, why would you watch something that makes you cry or makes you feel so uncomfortable, uneasy, whatever? Because grow up. That is my answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. They kidnap the women and take them into the country. Country road. I'll spit on your grave. Deja vu. West Virginia. Non-consensual. Uh, so, wouldn't you know it, after they have abducted them, well, we see who's the general. We see who's pulling the strings now, don't we? Now, don't we, is Becky. Becky has wanted revenge for quite some time. And, uh, however, she's pissed, flips the fuck out. Why is Christy there, goddammit? Why is Christy there? Played by the very tam- talented and I'll go ahead and say it, fearless Jamie Bernadette. I thought Jamie Bernadette was fearless as her portrayal as Christy Hills, in her portrayal as Christy Hills. Sean, it kind of sounds like you you need to really grow up. <laughs> grow up. Uh, but yeah, Becky's pissed that uh, Christy's with him. Told you just to kidnap that bitch that killed Johnny. 
that cut his dick off. So wait a minute, Sean. You won't say the the one word. You'll just keep on saying non-consensual, but you'll say you'll talk about a man getting his dick cut off ten times. I certainly will. I certainly will. What podcast do you think you turned tuned into? <laughs> I'd gladly talk about the fucking loss of a dick on this show. <laughs> It's a lot more comfortable for... I don't know why. It's a lot more comfortable for me to talk about that than the uh, rock sequence uh, in the OG or in this one. Pick your poison. We'll say maybe on the church steps. That one was pretty uncomfortable. Those of you that seen the film know what I'm talking about. Uh, actually, I am going to fucking spoil that one for you, but not at this exact moment. Uh, what else was uncomfortable? A, a broken bottle to the to the groin to the dick and balls <sighs> right where was i i it, back to the point of uh Jamie Bernadette being uh, fearless if you're in a movie that has that i like if you're a lady and you're in a movie that has that and you're not like weird like yes it's just the most and i <laughs> don't don't fucking be mean right now. Okay. I I just think you're probably pretty cool. Not that you think like what's going on in the script, but you got to have a you got to be pretty laid back and have a tough skin to be in a movie like this and and perform well, I might add. So um Kevin and Becky take Jennifer to the site. Wait a minute. Yep. Becca's mad, uh, Becky's mad. Kevin and Becky take Jennifer to the site where she hanged Matthew. While Scotty drives Christy to an unknown location, Jennifer is forced to dig a hole. <laughs> yes, Jennifer is forced to dig her own grave. While listening to music, uh, because if you guys saw the OG, or if you would like me to tell you, after uh, Jennifer cuts Johnny's dick off in the first one, she sits down and listens to a little class of music, has a little filet mignon, a glass of the red. Those, the last two didn't happen. But she does listen to classical music and uh, listen as Johnny screams about ble- bleeding out, which did make me happy, quite frankly. <laughs> I I was like, yeah, yeah, girl, or yeah, whoa, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> Let him bleed out. See, I'm weird. I can't do the sexual violence, but I'm okay with a man's dick bleeding out in the bathroom. I don't know. I I don't I I gave up wondering such questions. Uh meanwhile, da, 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 uh she uh, Jennifer manages to escape by using the shovel as a weapon, a weapon and stealing the gun. Meanwhile, Christy convinces Scotty to pull over on the premise of her needing to use the bathroom. Scotty, Scotty tells her to go in the woods, but then becomes suspicious when she takes too long, to go, and he goes and finds her. But of course, Christy knocks him out with a fucking tree branch, steals his truck, and drives back to find her mother. Jennifer is greeted by a strange woman on a bike. Oh, yeah, that was weird, too. But, I mean, again, it comes back in the end, but it almost feels horn-shoed. <laughs> it almost feels shoehorned. Horn-shoed on, on some level, just because you're like, wait, what? And why does she have a Joker card on her fucking bike spoke? Anyway. Um, after the strange woman on the bicycle passed by, then we hear... <laughs> and they must have loved it. The the sound of this puttering old Ford truck. Uh, we hear the sound of a puttering old Ford truck come up, and it's the aforementioned old drunk lady, an old man, old woman, an old man. Uh, they pick her up and it's, it, it's a very weird, like I had no idea what the fuck was going on <laughs> and I and like, I'm, I'm in tune to it. Like I got my phone on me. I'm, 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 I'm engaged about it. And I'm like, what the goddamn shit is happening right now? <laughs> Who the fuck are these people? This woman is turning in a stellar performance, but like, does she fucking not matter? Because if she fucking doesn't matter, I don't need this right now. <laughs> I need this to be over with <laughs> because we because we haven't even got to the, the, the hard part yet. 
Anyway, Jennifer is dropped off at the church, which she finds to be... La- oh, yes, Jennifer finds her way. Jennifer, not Christy, Jennifer. Camille Keaton finds her way to the church, only to find that it's lock- locked. Becky finds her, and after forcing her to beg for her life, beg for her daughter's life, remember I said about the church steps? This is where I'll spoil a little bit to you, just so you can hear me. After the begging for her own life and the begging for her daughters, Becky fucking decapitates Jennifer. So, gang, <laughs> remember the lady from the first film turns in a fucking goddamn all, all-world performance? How convincing. And this lady just got decapitated a half hour into the film. 35 minutes, maybe longer, I don't fucking know. I didn't, didn't have a fucking time stamp on it, do I? All I know is there's a lot more film to go after we saw Jennifer get decapitated on the steps of a church. Think about that. Think about that, gang. I can do I can do the fucked up images, and I know you horror fail the you know you horror aficionados are just like yeah metal yeah and it is metal it is it is second non consensual revenge film that day and if you may if you out there uh, horror aficionados or other do that and you are not obligated to do that you're I I would suggest maybe going to talk to someone might. You know, it's okay to talk to someone in 2022, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Just talk to someone, because you shouldn't watch two non-consensuals in one day, unless you're just a crazy person trying to rip the band-aid off, so you don't have to do them later. Save the good ones for yourself, mate. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's why I did. I fucking, I looked at what I had. I did, uh, he came from the swamp, because I had never heard of those films, reasonably so, because they were... Um, regional films, and then what came next? Well, two Japanese films, got to keep them back to back, and then I had to do one for me. I did do Phantom of the Mall, but then we were back at it. I had to rip the bed, and I wanted, because my uh, my chick was in town, I wanted to watch something, like she was, she knew, that she knows I have a lot of shit to do, so she was cool with watching um, one, but I, <laughs> watching Phantom of the Mall, I, I was just like, I have to do this. And there was no fucking way I was going to be like, hey, so I'm kind of weird and I like to do the hard stuff first. Do you mind if we watch I Spit on Your Grave? What's that about? Well, there's actually, yeah, exactly. Not going to go over well, especially for someone who, A, doesn't do horror films in general. And just like she only does movies like when she's forced to by me. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to be like, hey, you need to sit down and watch this I Spit on Your Grave. You are going to love it. Have you seen it? No, I have not. Well, then why are you talking to me like that? Well, you'll see. So we did Phantom of the Mall, nonetheless. <laughs> Which I wish, so there's an age gap. I wish that it, like she liked Phantom of the Mall, but like for me to see a varsity jacket killer <laughs> with a ball cap and a phantom mask doing punches and kicks in a karate set, come on bruh from the late 80s come on bruh i just wish it would have hit his home as as it as it did i maybe i should have just showed her this one being like you tough or what (laughs) right so uh yeah jennifer gets decapitated and you know what i'm thinking i didn't know at this point but i was thinking after that happened oh christy's gonna be pissed she is going to be just livid with what Becky has done to her mother, <laughs> which was decapitator in a church. And a uh, little side point here. Uh, the screaming, the growling, the monologue that Becky gives on the porch of those steps, that's where I go back and forth. Are you so bad that I can't watch this right now? Or are you so good that I can't watch this right now. I am glass half full guy. But I just wanted to turn her off. 
<laughs> I just wanted to fucking turn her off. You got to be shitting me. Uh, Christy Amaya arrives moments later. Her mother dead. And oh, the corpse is just sitting on top of her body. That's how Christy, Christy finds her on the porch steps with fucking, or on the, at the church steps with decapitated and the fucking head just sitting on her stomach. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, After Christy finds her mother dead, uh, she unsuccessfully finds help. And I don't know, it was like three or four minutes. It was a, another weird sequence, but she comes back and uh, after looking for help with her mother's corpse, and her mother's corpse is gone. <laughs> and I believe uh, as the van of which the mom now resides, her hand is laying out of the door of <laughs> the back door of the truck. So I don't like, it's one of those things where it's like, Oh, you're trying to be funny right now, motherfucker. Hey, Mir, you trying to be funny right now. You just, Jennifer turns in an all-star, all-star performance in the OG one. You just decapitate her. And now you're cracking jokes. Fuck's wrong with you. Actually, if I'm being completely honest, ah, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, especially if like, <coughs> if you, and I have no idea if this is true or not. Like, you didn't want to make a film forty years, uh, f- yeah, forty years later about it. But the fans, you know, you get tired of listening to the fans, so you know, and you were just kind of like, hey, f- you didn't want to do it. Then doing that is even more pleasing to me. Being like, hey, fuck you! This isn't this isn't serious, mate. It's just a movie. It's just a movie, and it. Uh, the gang goes to Johnny's grave to celebrate their victory, but not before jumping, uh, dumping Jennifer's body into the grave. Christy wakes up the next morning, steals clothes from. Oh, oh fuck! Yeah, I've even my. Okay, so remember how I said that her body's gone. <laughs> Jennifer's body's gone after Christy goes around trying to find it. Well. Becky comes back and chases Christy into the woods. And hence where we get our title. (laughs) She's now in the woods and it is deja vu. There is some more non-consensual that takes place. Kevin knocks her out, brutally knocks her out, and then non-consensuals and uh, it doesn't end there oh no Becky even sexually assaults a knocked out Jamie Bernadette Christy Hills fearless Jamie is fearless even I was like I well I was torn okay so I'm 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 a sick fuck at the end of the day I'm pretty sick I'm sick with it um, it, <clears throat> I don't, I don't mind that we had some girl on girl. <laughs> Fuck this sounds so fucked up. I don't mind that we had some non-consensual girl on girl. <laughs> cause it does make it for whatever reason it makes it, you know, cause as a man, you know, that's fucked. That's fucked up, right? You don't see that very often. If I may remind you one other time, this would be like the seventh or eighth time, I had already watched a non-consensual movie prior to this one. (laughs) So when this scene is happening and then Becky joins in, I was like, you got to be fucking shitting me. (laughs) Um, But... Deja vu can also be glass half full. Glass half full is well. Christy ain't gonna fuck around neither. Hell nah. No. And then, in fact, I would argue Christy turns in a pretty, pretty, pretty convincing performance from there on out. 
At first, I was a little bit on the fence, but we weren't telling a story about her, so I didn't have any character development. I had no scenes for me to go off of her acting. I didn't have that. I was now I was I was watching the Jennifer storyline, or you know Jennifer's demise rather. Fucking a, was I not prepared for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, if you'd have said, if you're like, oh, so this is the direct sequel, you're watching it right after the OG, you're kind of crazy, but do you think she's going to get decapitated on the on church steps? My answer to you would have been, well, no. Don't be crazy. In fact, she lives. She lives. But Mier said, fuck you. <laughs> Holy shit. We have gone on way too long with this episode and talked about nothing I hope that's I hope you don't find that to be true Camille Keaton was just well for what her part offered really strong uh, she didn't get to spread her wings ew I, I'm sorry uh, she didn't get to uh, have a spectrum I think like she did in you know the headliner OG but I, I thought she turned in a good performance. Jamie Bernadette, I'll say it one last time, fearless. Fearless on the microphone. Not on the microphone, behind the camera. You understood, right? Uh, Maria Olsen, hate you, love you, if you understand. <laughs> hate you, love you. Jim Tavari, ah, when you were speaking scripture, I wanted to kick your kneecaps. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Jonathan PC is Kevin. <clears throat> well, I think <clears throat> I'm not alone <clears throat> when I say you might have been the second most hated of the bunch. Right? If that is so, turned in a good performance, I'd say. Jonathan PC. Peaky PC. Jeremy Ferdman is Scotty. Scotty doesn't know. And Holgie Forrester as the old woman, Roy Allen the Third, and uh, let's not forget Alexandra Kenworthy, who is the lady on the bicycle. Turns out she might be Ken. What did you say, Sean? I said she might be Ken. I'm I'm purposely fading out so that <laughs> I'm not spoiling anything. Are we good here? Are we good? Written and directed by Mir Zarchi. Uh, cinematography by Peja Rodin, uh, Rodinkovic. Peja Rodinkovic. Uh, yeah, two hours and 28 minutes of bleak. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. We went a little long. I apologize, gang. It's just trying to make the non consensuals as unbearable for you as it was for me. Now, from a film, not so bad. Film standpoint, not so bad. Theatricality and deception, not so bad. Powerful agents to the uninitiated. But we are initiated, aren't we, Bruce? Ella Cinema. Ronan Flicks releases I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. A.K.A. Day of the Woman, Deja Vu. Check it out. Bonus features packed to the gills. Ellis Cinema, we gone.